Almost everyone has heard of diabetes, but less people know that there are multiple types of diabetes beyond just the two main forms of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. But in reality, there are actually several more. And today, we're going to talk about a form of diabetes that often goes overlooked, but is still just as real a form of diabetes as any other. And if you read the title of this video, you already know what it is type 1.5 diabetes. In this video, you'll discover what type 1.5 diabetes is and what causes it, how type 1.5 diabetes differs from other types of diabetes, how to know if you have type 1.5 diabetes rather than another form, and the proven evidence-based guidelines for how to manage type 1.5 diabetes. Now, it turns out that type 1.5 diabetes is actually a very overlooked form of diabetes. It turns out that the medical community may actually not realize exactly how many people are living with this. According to the American Diabetes Association, of those who are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, about 10% of them over the age of 35 are actually living with type 1.5. And what that means is about 2 to 3 million people are estimated to be living with type 1.5 diabetes and may not even know it. Now, there's actually a good reason why you may not have heard of type 1.5 diabetes until recently. And that's because it's a somewhat new scientific discovery. In 1977, researchers published a fascinating discovery in The Lancet that 11% of type 2 diabetes patients in their sample had antibodies against the insulin-producing beta cells in their pancreas. In other words, their own immune system was attacking the beta cells inside of their pancreas, much like in type 1 diabetes. But the time frame and the symptoms matched up with a more common understanding of type 2 diabetes. It then took another couple of decades to officially name this new condition. It was named Latent Autoimmune Diabetes in Adults, or LADA. The more common name is type 1.5 diabetes, which is what you're going to hear us using most often. The symptoms of type 1.5 diabetes might be familiar to many people who have heard about diabetes. They include fatigue, weakness, tingling in hands or feet, dry, itchy skin, hunger soon after meals, excessive thirst, blurred vision, and frequent urination. To understand what makes type 1.5 diabetes different, it's useful to briefly cover the diagnostic criteria for type 1 diabetes and for type 2 diabetes and contrast that versus type 1.5. Type 1 diabetes is characterized by a rapid decline in insulin production. This is caused by an autoimmune reaction that eventually stops the insulin producing beta cells in your pancreas from making insulin. Now people with type 1 diabetes must inject exogenous or external insulin in order to control their blood glucose values and it's considered a lifelong condition that currently has no known intervention to reverse completely. Now Robbie and I have both been living with type 1 diabetes for a combined total of 42 years. And we're lucky that we are thriving with type 1 diabetes simply because of the way we choose to eat. In type 2 diabetes, one major difference is that your body is still producing insulin, but the insulin which it does manufacture doesn't function well inside of your liver and inside of your muscle. So type 2 diabetes is most common in adults, but it's actually caused by another condition called insulin resistance, which is a condition that's caused by the buildup of dietary fat inside of your liver and muscle tissue. Most people believe it's due to a buildup of sugar or an excess intake of sugar, but the research shows that it's an excess consumption of dietary fat, which causes insulin resistance in your liver and your muscle. This buildup of fat makes your body's insulin less effective, causing your blood glucose levels to rise and causing a number of different complications, which are actually the exact same as the complications of untreated type 1 diabetes. The other major difference is that type 2 diabetes is reversible in 80 to 90% of all cases, as long as you catch it early enough. If you don't effectively manage type 2 diabetes, eventually your insulin producing beta cells die and it becomes a lifelong condition like type 1 diabetes. And finally, we have type 1.5 diabetes. The reason we call this form of diabetes type 1.5 diabetes is that it has characteristics of both forms of diabetes. Much like type 1, type 1.5 is caused by an autoimmune condition rather than lifestyle choices. It's also a lifelong condition like type 1. However, much like type 2, 
your body is still producing some insulin, which means that you can take steps to control and manage this condition before you're completely dependent on exogenous injected insulin. A simple way to think about type 1.5 diabetes is it is adult onset, slow progressing type 1 autoimmune diabetes. Now, one challenge is that type 1.5 diabetes is, is frequently misdiagnosed as type 2 diabetes, which can lead to an incorrect treatment protocol. One example is Kim, who was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. But no matter how hard she tried to treat her condition, she continued to suffer for 18 years from extreme swings in blood glucose and exhaustion that made her unable to exercise. Something was wrong, and it wasn't Kim's lack of effort or lack of dedication to find a solution. As you may have guessed, she wasn't living with type 2 diabetes. After almost two decades of struggle, she learned that she actually had type 1.5 diabetes because she was properly diagnosed. And it turned out that her treatment for type 2 diabetes never worked from the get-go. But this story has a happy ending and one that we'll tell you about later in this story. So you might be asking yourself, how do I know if I have type 1.5 diabetes? Type 1.5 diabetes is diagnosed by taking a blood test to see if you have any diabetes antibodies present in your body. These antibodies include GAD, also known as GADA, IA2, ICA, IAA, or ZNT8AB, it's zinc transporter. If you test positive for a minimum of one of these antibodies, then you may have type 1.5 diabetes. But the antibody situation is different in type 1 diabetes in terms of how much damage has been done to the pancreas. The American Diabetes Association says, unlike type 1 diabetes, the progression of autoimmune beta cell failure is slow. That's the key distinction here. So to test how much damage this autoimmune version of diabetes has caused, there's actually a second test called the C-peptide test. Now the C-peptide test is a marker of insulin production and measures whether or not your pancreas is producing normal amounts, reduced amounts, or close to zero amounts. Now the C-peptide test is one of the most insightful and important tests that you can ever have measured because it definitively tells you how much insulin your beta cells are capable of producing at the time of measurement. Now we do have a full video on the C-peptide test. And in that video, you're gonna learn what is the C-peptide, how can you get it taken, and how to interpret your results. If you want to watch that video, go ahead and click on the link above and you can learn all that information there. But fortunately, no matter what form of diabetes you may be living with, you can start taking steps today that'll drastically improve your management of diabetes and your quality of life starting immediately. There are two main goals to aim for as part of managing type 1.5 diabetes. First, you want to get your blood glucose and metabolic health under control which will drastically improve your quality of life. And second, you want to make sure you protect the remaining beta cells in your pancreas for as long as possible. And there are two main ways to do this. First, the use of insulin. As soon as you have the data to demonstrate that your beta cells are not secreting a sufficient quantity of insulin, the use of insulin therapy is the primary treatment of choice, which makes a heck of a lot of sense. And second, you want to maximize your insulin sensitivity and make the most of the insulin you are still producing. Now the mastering diabetes method is based on more than a century of research with thousands of studies and countless success stories just like Kim's. Before she found the mastering diabetes method, Kim had been struggling for nearly 20 years. But afterward, well, after learning about the C-peptide test, she discovered that her C-peptide was low and that she actually had type 1.5 diabetes. She went on insulin and fully embraced a low-fat plant-based whole food lifestyle, which has significantly increased her insulin sensitivity, which in turn has kept her overall insulin requirements very low. Her fasting glucose went from 140 down to 70 to 80. At 52 years old, Kim says she feels, she feels like she's in her 20s again. In the addition to her newfound love of mangoes and berries, she has also discovered that she enjoys exercise now that she can do it regularly without feeling exhausted. It's a really inspiring story of success. And if you'd like to learn more, you can watch the full story of Kim on our YouTube channel by clicking on the link above. Now here's the best part. Kim isn't alone. Countless of other people have stories just like this. 
and have been able to transform their lives using the Mastering Diabetes Method, living with type 1.5 diabetes. After all, it's an approach that doesn't just improve your insulin sensitivity, it also improves your overall quality of life, and that's what makes it so powerful. You can increase your energy and your mood, you can improve your heart and your metabolic health, you can reduce your risk for diabetes complications, you can begin to lose weight and lose that weight permanently, and you can reduce your risk for many chronic diseases, including kidney disease, fatty liver disease, peripheral neuropathy, cognitive decline, and or Alzheimer's disease, and dramatically improve your eyesight by decreasing your risk for retinopathy. We call that a win, win, win. What's the takeaway here? Well, one big thing to know is that there are millions of people living with type 1.5 diabetes that have been misdiagnosed with type 2 diabetes. We also learned that there's a way to get clarity through a diabetes antibody test and a C-peptide test. And finally, we learned that there's a proven method that you can use to manage type 1.5 diabetes through insulin therapy and lifestyle change, like a low-fat, plant-based whole food diet, intermittent fasting, daily movement, and the use of decision trees. And that's the bottom line. If you'd like to learn more about how to test and get clarity on which form of diabetes you may be living with, we've included some helpful links in the description about type 1.5 diabetes and the C-peptide test. And as always, if you're looking to take the next step, master the method, and live your best possible life like Kim and so many others, the Mastering Diabetes Coaching Program is there for you. We have personalized coaching and one-on-one -on -one private coaching. And if you're looking to take control of your diabetes health today with the guidance of your own personal diabetes expert, then the Mastering Diabetes Method is perfect for you. Along the way, you might just dramatically improve your overall health and reduce your risk for many chronic diseases at the same time. And trust me, that's something that you want. Well, that's it for today. But if you'd like to learn more, don't forget to press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click on that fancy little bell icon to turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we have new videos that contain life-saving information that can dramatically improve your quality of life. See you in the next video.